Let's look briefly at one of my absolute favourite medieval swords. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So as many of you know, I worked with Windlass and the Royal Armouries on an official certified range of swords, the first batch six medieval swords. I'm currently working on the second batch with them that are, only two of them are medieval swords. There's three 16th century and there's a dagger in there. So it's a, it's a different range of uh, swords. Hopefully it'll be very exciting and I'll have lots of video content after those because they're different types of swords. But what I really wanted to talk about here was one of the swords from the first batch and I realised, so I took this to Tewkesbury with me really as um, recently as one of my walking around swords. So essentially this is a sharp, okay, so this isn't a sword that I would use in reenactment combat but for living history and uh, dressing up or indeed for test cutting this is a great sword and when I come to choose a sword I, I think of a sort of um, a fantasy historical scenario whereby I'm choosing a sword as an everyday carry. Now I know from making videos for many years on this channel you guys like to talk about everyday carries whether it's pistols, knives, swords, whatever uh, because it is an interesting topic and you have to bear in mind that and what, what you choose as an everyday carry is very context-based okay so it fits perfectly on this channel uh, because of course what you choose is based on the scenario. Now, the reasons I love this. So first of all, let's talk about longer swords and let's talk about shorter swords. So, another great sword for an everyday carry might be something like the Hanger, which is also from the uh, Windlass range, incidentally. But, um, fundamentally, why I personally don't tend to go for a shorter sword, although I'll expand on this in a second, is reach okay now if you're fighting in a battle and if this is a backup weapon so if your primary weapon is a longbow or a bill or a pike or something like this and this is your backup weapon this is absolutely brilliant for a number of reasons because having a shorter sword means that it's really easy to wear it doesn't bash into everything and get in the way and when you need to pull it out you can get it out super super quickly and if you're in a melee which is the time when you're likely to be suddenly having to pull a sword out. Not only is it easier to get out because it's shorter, but you can deploy it and use it in close range, in essentially grappling and punching range, much more easily. So whether it's reenactment or whether it was a real medieval battle, a short sword or indeed a knife or a dagger is an absolutely awesome weapon. So this is a great backup weapon. However, in civilian life, uh, if you're walking around the streets with the possible fear of attack um, in the street or getting into a duel, an argument, this type of thing, possibly also having to use your weapon from horseback, I would argue you want a slightly longer blade. So having greater reach is really advantageous and one-on-one, -on -one, assuming we don't have bucklers, shields or other, you know, other factors which might come into it, if we're just fighting sword versus sword, a person with a arming sword of this reach has an advantage, generally speaking, over someone with a short, you know, with a knife, a dagger, or a short sword. So why not go for a longer one? Why not go for a long sword? Well, quite simply, there's a few reasons. A long sword is actually a really good self-defense weapon in medieval streets, and lots of people did carry them. I personally, and this is a personal video, it's very subjective, and you know, I admit that, I personally wouldn't go for a longsword for a number of factors. Number one, I'm better with one-handed swords than longswords. I've never been a very good longsworder. I was a mediocre longsworder many years ago, but I'm not a good longsworder now. So now I'm, I spend far more time with my hands on single-hand weapons. So I personally am going to choose a single-hand weapon, but single-hand weapons do have some other advantages. They are easier to wear. Generally speaking, they are a bit lighter, they are a bit smaller, they don't have a long hilt sticking out. So they're easier to wear, easier to carry around, therefore possibly also easier and quicker to deploy. Moreover, they don't necessarily have a reach disadvantage if they're a little bit shorter, because one-handed, um, with a fully extended arm out, you get more reach than you do when you're holding a weapon with two hands because that naturally brings the other shoulder forward and brings you closer to the opponent. So one-handed swords actually have great reach because you can extend them far out from one side of your body. Um, so I'm a fan of one-handed swords. There is another factor as well. So civilian, you're talking about people in clothes. Okay, the Medici sometimes had, wore hidden armour and that went very well for them when they had their hidden corazine or brigandine or mail shirts or whatever. 
And people did do that. Yeah, you can wear a hidden mail shirt under your clothes and that will prevent you from being stabbed quite so easily. But assuming, generally speaking, a civilian environment is unarmoured, there are certain types of blade which are more, more beneficial to use against unarmoured opponents. Now, I've made videos in the past talking about how my belief is that the falchion, contrary to popular belief, is not an anti-armour weapon, it's actually an anti-flesh weapon. Now, the beauty of this particular sword, and why we come back to this particular example, is, as I pointed out in previous videos, inc including the review of this uh, sword, actually, if you haven't seen that, just type in windlass into my, um, into my videos and you'll find the reviews, um, is that this blade is essentially a falchion. <laughs> so it might not be evident on screen, but this is a single edge, so that is completely blunt. It's a back sword. It actually has a false edge up here, but um, it is a... Uh, single-edged back sword, okay, with a broad blade. So we've got an incredibly shallow, narrow edge bevel here on what's a comparatively thin and nimble blade. So it, it flexes where it should do in the upper half of the blade, but you can see it's a fairly flexible blade. It's also got a relatively fat tip on it, which means you can cut still quite effectively because you've got a thin edge geometry and quite a broad blade out here. You can still, hitting someone with that bit of the blade there, across their thigh, across their neck, face, um, or arm, you will still do a really nasty cut. Whereas, a lot of swords that, uh, if I just grab the um, Wakefield hanger for a second, a lot of swords that are much more pointy and acute, but also thicker, just don't cut very well at the tip because of their edge geometry, because they're essentially broader and have a much more fat edge angle. So quite simply, this is great for thrusting. And if I'm going to be stabbing through a male shirt or, you know, fighting in, in war and stabbing into resisting, you know, gambesons and stuff like that, this is a better point. However, in a civilian environment, although this might not be such a good thrusting point, it is a much better cutting blade. It, it can cut further from the hand. It can cut nearer to the tip and it can still thrust well enough to thrust through clothes, certainly if it's well sharpened, through clothes and into flesh and create a, a wide um, wound, essentially, which will bleed a lot. So it might not be the deepest wound, but it'll be a wide wound. So, fundamentally, those are the reasons that for an everyday carry in the street, I absolutely love this sword. It's really nice to wear, it's really nice to carry, feels great in the hand. It has that asymmetrical uh, grip, incidentally, so the grip is to the back, which also gives you a slight, um, a slight axe effect. We, we obviously find this sometimes with Langmesser and fal falchions and things like that, so with, when you've got a single-edged blade, often the blade will be forwards of the hand, and that's the case here. So while it looks like a long sword, you've actually got beautiful amount of cutting capacity and reach with this sword, and it's still light and nimble, and you can move as quick as a military sabre, but with greater cutting potential than most military sabres, in fact. Um, so an absolutely fantastic everyday carry. I love this sword, and this is genuinely one of my absolute favourite medieval replica swords that I own. And it's almost always my go-to. The only other sword which I sometimes go to, and I did say I'd come back to this point, um, well, two swords, in fairness, that I sometimes go to as a wearing sword is either the Wakefield Hanger or this Langmesser, okay? Now, funnily enough, some of the reasons are the same as why I go to the um, single-edged arming sword. The blades are actually functionally quite similar, but the arming sword's bigger. But the reason that I sometimes go for these hangers is they're so easy to wear. Literally, when you're wearing this, you forget it's there. It's there when you want it, but they are so small, it's really like wearing a big Bowie knife. And so long as it's got a good suspension system, once you've got it on, it's there, it's no trouble, it doesn't knock into things, it doesn't flap around. They are very, very convenient to wear, and I'm sure that was one of their secrets to their success. But if you're wearing, willing to wear a slightly bigger sword, slightly more inconvenient, this, as a fighting weapon, is absolutely awesome. So what would you choose in a medieval environment, walking around in the streets? What would you personally wear? And it doesn't need to be the bestest sword ever, or the top three bestest swords ever. Just what would you choose? What would be your choice? Get posting down below, and I hope I see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.